So let me just get organized here. So our so Dr. Paul Shrivastava has a unique background that combines academic scholarship and teaching with significant entrepreneurial and senior management experience. He is Chief Sustainability Officer at Penn State University, Director of the Sustainability Institute, and Professor of Organizations at the Smeal School of Business. He is a full member of the Club of Rome and serves on the board for the Alliance for the Arts and Research Universities. Dr. Paul Srivastava created several entrepreneurial ventures in India, New York, and Montreal. He served as Executive Director of Future Earth, a global research platform for environmental change and transformation to sustainability. Paul received his PhD from, from University of Pittsburgh and spent many years teaching at NYU Stern School of Business, New York University, and Bucknell University. He has published 18 books and 120 and over 120 articles in scholarly and professional journals and books. And I just wanted to mention that for fun, Paul, he is an avid fan of Argentin, Argentinian tango dancing, but I don't think he's going to do that for us via Skype today. So I just wanted to, um, just with that introduction, turn it over to Paul. And then, of course, we'll, again, be looking at your Q&A and uh, have a question and answer at the end. Paul? Thank you, Mark. And you know, it takes two to tango. I'm <laughs> alone over here. But uh, I really appreciate Mark and Matt's efforts on behalf of the Green Gov Council to have this idea of a joint webinar series, uh, something that we are very keen on supporting and participating in. This is the very first uh, talk in that series. We hope uh, there'll be, a, I'll show you the, the calendar at the end of the talk for the future webinars that are coming up. I hope all of you will join and encourage all your agency colleagues to join because I think sustainability is uh, the work that, that needs to be done collaboratively and in partnership. And before I launch into my discussion of how we are doing sustainability here at Penn State and the sustainable development goals, uh, let me uh, just say that uh, uh, Green Gov Council and Sustainability Institute have a lot in common. The Green Gov Council was created, as Mark just pointed out, to encourage the incorporation of environmental sustainability into the practices and policies and uh, procurement and operations and regulations of all agencies of Pennsylvania government. In some ways, Sustainability Institute serves that function within Penn State. And Penn State is a large and geographically distributed organization. So I think uh, with our 23 campuses that are uh, across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and our extension programs that are in every single county of Pennsylvania, we are uniquely suited to partnering with the Green Gov Council to bring about a sustainable Pennsylvania. And that, in fact, is the vision of sustainability that we have at Penn State, that we at Penn State cannot be sustainable by just focusing on uh, a university park where I am located or the 23 campuses. We need to do sustainability for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and that will make Penn State sustainable. So all the programs that we have designed and uh, all the activities that we do, we keep this bigger con contextual picture in mind. We are part of Pennsylvania. We are a land grant university. We have uh, virtually legal obligations to serve Pennsylvania and its various populations. So we are really delighted to do this partnership. So thank you, Mark and Mark and Matt. I mean, for uh, the initiatives that you all have taken. So with that, let me uh, move towards uh, the content of what I want to talk about. And uh, I have about a dozen or so slides that I'll spend maybe 20 or so minutes and then have enough time for us for question answers and discussion because I really want this to be a dialogue, not just a one way delivering information to you. 
Uh, I also, before I begin, I want to say thank you for all of you who have attend, who are attending. Uh, I notice I don't recognize more than three names on the list of participants, which is a good sign because uh, you all are probably from different parts of Pennsylvania, from different agencies, and that is really the audience that we want to reach with this webinar series. So thank you for coming. So I'll say a few words about the context of sustainability before defining what we mean by sustainability and how we are approaching it. So we are now in 2020, we are in the midst of a pandemic of, uh, caused by coronavirus. Uh, uh, and that already came at a time when we were suffering from a climate crisis that we have known about for almost 50 years in terms of research and climate. But in 2015, we had a formal agreement, a global agreement on 192 nations that the world needs to do something about this. Uh, and we reached an accord called the Paris Climate Accord to reduce greenhouse gases, to reduce carbon emissions into the atmosphere. So there's global consensus around both the challenge as well as the solutions around climate. But we have not solved the problem of climate. And on top of it, on 2019, we got a, a report from the Intergovernmental Panel on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services, IPBES, which is the equivalent of IPCC for terrestrial and land issues, saying that over a million species are going to be extinct each year if we don't change our land use patterns and we don't do something about preserving biodiversity. So we are now in 2020 at a point where we have multiple crises sitting one on top of the other. I call this the omni-crisis phenomenon. We have uh, climate crisis and biodiversity crisis and the COVID crisis. And then on top of it, we have a global economic decline, which is creating joblessness and uh, a shrinking of economies. Uh, the global economic growth has gone from minus, plus 3% uh, uh, across the globe to minus 3%. Here in the US, our economy is going to shrink by about 6 to 8%, so also in Europe, uh, and China, Brazil, and India, etc. Unemployment rate uh, between 20 and 25%, uh, Pennsylvania has been particularly hard hit, and uh, almost 265 million people are expected to face famine, around the globe, according to the Food and Agriculture Organization. And there is already 20 to 30% food insecurity, even in Pennsylvania. We did a survey of our own students across the campuses, and those are the numbers that we have come up with uh, in terms of how many people are feeling food insecurity. So this is a moment of rethinking. It's a moment when we cannot just assume to go back to business as usual. We need to be thinking about a future. We need to be designing a future together that is sustainable, that is resilient, and that is that brings along everybody and does not leave behind anyone. And this is the context in which we have to implement sustainability. So sustainability needs to be done holistically uh, we can't just do sustainability on land and ignore water. We can't just do it on food and ignore energy. We need to be thinking about the planet as a system of social and natural ecosystems that need to be managed together so that we wisely utilize uh, our resources to support a population of that's going to be 10 billion people within another two decades. We cannot afford to deal with one crisis at a time. We just don't have time to do that. So we need to think holistically. We need to think in terms of interdependencies between these crises. And the UN Agenda 2030, which is the official name of Sustainable Development Goals, offers a systems framework for sustainability. So while sustainability is about sustaining life on Earth, about making sure that uh, 
we live within the means of nature and preserve the planet for our future generations. It, uh, that kind of broad abstract definition is given concrete form in the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. And that is the reason why we at Penn State have adopted it as a framework for uh, implementing sustainability. Uh, this is uh, also appropriate for an organization like ours, which has many different departments. We have 13 colleges, we have 165 different departments, each uh, focusing on different disciplines and specialties. So having a broad framework allows all parts of, the, uh, of Penn State to get behind this idea of sustainability and contribute in different ways. So the College of Engineering can contribute technical solutions, whereas the College of uh, Liberal Arts can contribute uh, perhaps humanistic solutions or spiritual solutions or uh, other types of solutions. And collectively, we will be making a difference to sustainability. So I want to spend a few minutes talking about what exactly are these 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Many of you, when you hear the word sustainability, think about the environment. But let me point out that of the 17 goals, only six of them pertain to the environment as in the natural environment. The remaining goals pertain to social and economic and technological issues that are also essential for sustaining life on Earth. So I'm very quick, quickly going to run through these and uh, in one sentence each so that uh, those of you who are not familiar with the uh, goals will at least get a feeling for what they are. So goal number one, end poverty in all its forms everywhere. Goal number two, end hunger, achieve food security and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. Goal number three, ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. Goal number four, ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning. Goal number five is achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. Goal number six is ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. Seven, ensure access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy for all. Goal number eight is promote sustained, inclusive, and sustainable economic growth, full and productive employment, and decent work. Nine is build resilient infrastructures, promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization. 10 is reduce inequalities within and among countries, make cities and human settlements inclusive. 12 is ensure sustainable consumption and production. 13 is take urgent action to combat climate change. 14 is conserve and sustainably use oceans, seas, marine resources, water resources, etc. And goal number 15 is to protect, restore, and promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems, biodiversity, forests. Goal number 16 is promoting peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, as well as justice and uh, strong institutions. And goal 17 is about the means of implementation, which is partnerships and collaboration. So as you can see, these goals are universal, they are interdependent, they're not like 17 silos, they are meant to be goals towards sustainable transformation for the whole earth. And I don't want to be naive about it, but they do involve some trade-offs, there are some internal conflicts among goals, and there are certain synergies between goals. So we need to keep all of that in mind as we move systemically forward to implement sustainability. So the goals are broadly divided uh, as uh, goals relating to the planet. So there are five of those. Then there are goals that relate to people and their prosperity. And then there are goals of peace and partnership, which are global in nature. I am sure that state agencies are responsible for responding to 
many of these issues, either in terms of the departments of DCED or DCNR, or uh, these are the agencies or DEP that would be most involved in some of these goals. But I think there is a role in this systemic way of thinking. There is a role for every single agency of Pennsylvania government to participate and contribute productively to sustainability. So the next question is, how is Pennsylvania doing on these goals? Where are we? So I want to share with you this one report called the Sustainable Development Report of the United States was done in 2018. And uh, another report has been done in 2019 that focuses on cities in the United States. This one is on states. And I can share the presentation with you for those of you who want to look at how different states are implementing sustainable development goals. I just took one, one uh, slide out of it on the right-hand side. You see this slide, US states, uh, SDG index uh, dashboard. So just a few words about what this represents. So on the horizontal axis, you see numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to 16. Those refer to the goals. And on the vertical axis, you see the states. I don't know how well you can see through the, the states, beginning with Massachusetts. The next one is, uh, I think, Oregon. Even I can't read. The size of this thing is so small. Uh, let's see if I can make this a little larger. Probably not. OK. Uh, yeah, maybe a little bit better. So first in Massachusetts and Washington and uh, Vermont and Minnesota, etc. Those are going down the rows. So yellow color is, uh, uh, before yellow, red color uh, cell means by 2030, there is no chance that that goal is going to be achieved. The green color means there is very high likelihood, good chance that we will achieve that particular goal in that state. The cell that is brown is uh, little uh, is in between the, the red. It's little below the red, and yellow is below the, the brown. So the best option is green. We will achieve yellow. We may achieve brown, very difficult to achieve, and uh, red, we have no chance of achieving. So this is done state by state for every goal. So those of you who are interested in understanding where Pennsylvania is, I would recommend that you go into this report. And I'll just highlight a couple of points. First, Pennsylvania is number 30 out of, 40, out of 50 states. So we are somewhere at the bottom of this page. Even small states like Vermont and um, Oregon and California, big states like California, all of these are above us. We are not number 30 in virtually anything. I mean, if you look at economics, if you look at prosperity, we are doing better than number 30 out of 50. But on sustainable development goals, we are not very well doing very well. So the other thing I want you to note is that Pennsylvania, which is right here, number 30, if you go down this row, there is no green cell. That means there's not a single goal that we are going to achieve by 2030 if we continue to go down the path that we are on. Another thing to note is there is one goal, goal number six, which is clean water, which many states have a green cell on. If you look down this row, many of them are going to be able to meet the goal by 2030. Pennsylvania has a yellow on it. So even in, a, in an area, a resource area like water, where we know we have surplus of water, where we know that we are going to get more precipitation of water in the coming years, uh, we are not going to achieve the clean water goal because a lot of the water gets polluted due to runoff uh, from agriculture and stormwater systems and uh, uh, we are one of the biggest uh, nutrient loaders to the Chesapeake Bay. So the, the, the short message on this is 
that we are a long way from accomplishing the sustainable development goals by 2030 unless we make concerted efforts. <laughs> and it is towards these efforts that I want to direct our attention for the remainder of my presentation. This slide, I'm just going to mention it. I'm not going to go into details of it, but this is about uh, cities and how they are scoring. The same kind of scheme, yellow, red, brown, and green. Uh, the cities that I pulled out over here, according to the index, uh, Pittsburgh comes number 33. Lancaster is number 50. Harrisburg, Carlisle is at number 62. Uh, and then Scranton, Wilkesbury, Hazleton area are around 78 in terms of their score and goes down to Youngstown, Ohio, which is sort of Pennsylvania border 100. So there are some cities that are doing better than others, but we are certainly not among the leaders. So given all that, I thought I'll share with you a little bit about how we at Penn State are trying to take sustainability and institutionalize it across the university, uh, perhaps as a way of uh, sharing what uh, the, gov the Green Gov Council and the various agencies of the state government could also be thinking about. So by institutionalizing, I mean uh, making sure that there is enough presence of sustainability discussion within every unit of the organization and that sustainability organically emerges from these units rather than being centrally imposed either from the top or through some kind of a, a, a diktat from uh, the bosses. It, it needs to happen organically from people's hearts and minds uh, and it doesn't work unless uh, we have a lot of people carrying it forward together in a collaborative way. So we are trying to make sure that our 23 campuses and our 13 colleges, all as individual units of the university, have a, uh, a, a commensurate and a well-aligned approach to sustainability around these sustainable development goals. So we at the Sustainability Institute don't own sustainability for Penn State. We say the sustainability has to be owned by every unit. We have 52 budgetary units. And if each unit understands what sustainability means for itself and implements some programs, then collectively we will be moving in the direction of sustainability. A second thing that we are very mindful of is this is not something that we can turn the switch on and, and become sustainable. It is not something you can just throw money on, although money is becoming shorter and shorter. It is, we are looking for implementing enduring and small solutions that evolve over a period of five, seven years into an institutional mandate that will be sustainable. Uh, we are realistic that uh, in a big complex organization like Penn State or like the government of Pennsylvania, things don't happen just because you are convinced and you are passionate about it. They happen when other people acknowledge that this needs to be done and they are willing to act. So we see this as a collaborative, partnering, co-creation process. And our institute works with all the 52 units to help them make their own decisions. We bring the resources. We bring the information. We are more like facilitators, more like people who instigate things, but let the units do and own sustainability for themselves. Um, and we are a very small team of about a dozen or so people here at the Institute coordinating, facilitating, initiating, training uh, our colleagues at the university. Uh, the Sustainable Development Goals acts as a broad umbrella framework that uh, different units can try to understand and then pick and choose the goals that they can make most contributions to. So everybody's sustainability program looks a little bit different depending on their assets, depending on their expertise, depending on what they feel they can contribute. One thing that we have done to uh, make this 
a sort of permanent feature of Penn State is uh, we have created a structure to support that framework, and we call it the 3C structure. Uh, the 3C stand for council, charter, and chair. So we ask each unit to uh, create a sustainability council. Uh, the council uh, should be led by a chair, so there is accountability and a person that uh, we can go to within the unit and, and uh, communicate with primarily. And the council and the chair uh, can bring in other participants and stakeholders to work on specific programs. These programs are designed as part of a charter. The charter kind of lays out the principles and a few activities and programs and uh, uh, plans. It could also uh, tie into the strategic planning for the unit, which is an exercise that we do every five years so that sustainability has uh, presence in the institutional framework and in institutional systems and in institutional information flows. So we thought that if we offer this up as a structure, a few units are going to adopt it every year, and then over a five to seven year period, we will have all the 52 units under this basic framework uh, and structure. Uh, in the first year, we have had 13 colleges, no, 10 colleges and five campuses and a few operating units that have adopted it. So we are very pleased that uh, there's been such a strong adoption rate. Uh, and now in these units, we are supporting the chair and the councils to develop their own sustainability plans, and many of them are quite independent. And uh, they are also, uh, they're at different stages, of course, of implementation. But we don't feel the pressure to do uh, the work within those units as much. So it's like we built a, a group of allies around us. Uh, and each unit could have a dozen to 20 people within the unit working on sustainability. So this is also a way in which we expand our sustainability community across multiple units of the organization. Some of the things that we have been doing is uh, we have funded some seed projects. Uh, we enable units to commit their own resources and to act on them by bringing them information and bringing them ideas and introducing them into resources from the outside. We manage a few network relationships, both within Pennsylvania, the Pennsylvania Environmental Resource Consortium, as well as outside Pennsylvania, which is a sustainable development solutions network of the United Nations that operates in 20 different regions of the world. Because you probably know we have a significant footprint outside of Pennsylvania, outside of the United States, in Africa, South America, Southeast Asia, and in China. So uh, we're trying to provide a, a mechanism, a platform that allows a very broad group of uh, members of this Penn State community to participate in sustainability. Uh, I could give some examples of the institutional systemic changes. Uh, I won't go into details into uh, each one of them, but uh, just mention a few and then try to bring this to a close. Uh, so on the operations side, uh, we have something called the Sustainable Operations Council that has participation from all the major operating departments including physical plant and contracting and procurement and IT and transportation and legal, financial, uh, all of those people sit on that council. Uh, they created a, a waste stream task force last year that led to some results. They, are, uh, they supported the creation of the 70 megawatt uh, 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 solar power plan that we uh, did a power purchase agreement on. Uh, so those are examples from the operation side of Penn State that we are able to support through the Sustainable Operations Council. Uh, let me move on to a few other things because I know I have four more slides. So, uh, so I want to talk about possibilities of collaboration uh, because I feel that we are 
doing this with the Green Gulf Council because we feel there is a huge potential for Penn State and the government of Pennsylvania agencies to collaborate. We've got a strong research background and basis, and we feel we can help the state, and we know that the state can help us in getting access and in many other ways. So I think uh, uh, part of the purpose of this series of webinars is to explore more areas of possible collaboration. Now, knowing that Pennsylvania is particularly badly hit with COVID uh, and the increasing amount of unemployment and poverty and uh, food insecurity, health and opioid, I just mentioned these as manifest problem manifestations that are rather recent. Uh, and on each one of them, we have certain expertise within Penn State to come up with helpful solutions. So uh, the other thing I want to mention is that because of our uh, distribution in the 23 campuses, which many of them have been established, well established within the community, they can serve as front lines for taking programs into the community, whether these programs pertain to food or employment or training or any other topic that the government is interested in uh, in implementing. And, and of course, there are the 18, uh, and each of these campuses, by the way, also has something called a launch box, which is a business creation, entrepreneurship support group. And usually the launch boxes are located not on campus, but in the community. So we have direct lines into the community to take economic services, development services, in two communities. Then agricultural extension, uh, we have offices. They are not as elaborate as our uh, campuses, but, but we have the ability to deliver information very widely across Pennsylvania. Of course, the research resources, we are a research R1 university. We do about 900, and this last year we did $980 million worth of research for federal government, state government, various agencies and for industrial sponsors. So we have well over 7,000 researchers who can bring information on virtually any topic to the table. And you all will get a sampling of that research as part of this webinar series. Just wanted to mention a couple of collaborations that are ongoing and some of them are in the past, but uh, the two that are ongoing now uh, the, the, we house the Pennsylvania State Climatologist's Office and something called the Environmental Monitoring Network that has almost 250 stations now across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, data on uh, soil and air and uh, humidity and uh, rainfall, all of that gets measured, tracked, uh, put into a database and made available online through a data sharing capability. Uh, this is a program that we uh, support agricultural communities with, farmers who need this kind of climatology data to uh, protect their crops. Uh, we recently started last year the Penn State Consortium to combat substance abuse to address the opioid crisis. Uh, it involves multiple departments uh, and expertise from our Hershey uh, Health uh, Sciences as well as our life science, Huck Life Science Institute, and many other universities and researchers. So these are some generic resources that have been built collaboratively that can serve as examples or maybe models for future potential collaborations. And here I just listed a few areas in which came to mind as uh, uh, areas for collaboration. These are not the only ones, but uh, they are top of mind right now because we are facing so many economic challenges and challenges related to agriculture and food production. Uh, so uh, I'm hoping that uh, with the help of Mark and Matt we and the rest of you who are on this call, we'll be able to uh, come up with some additional topics for collaboration and more importantly, convert them into specific projects of collaboration. So with that, I'm going to bring it to a close. We have about 20 minutes, I believe, uh, for questions. Thank you for your patience, and I look forward to the conversation.